Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Al Fadi, and we'd like to welcome you again to another episode of this fabulous series that we're going through myself and Dr. Jay Smith, who is with me here in studio. And we've been talking about external, uh, uh, basically, evidence that shows that the problem has some issues, and uh, uh, the Quran, I should say, have some problems and issues related to uh, not only its compilation, but also uh, its writings. And um, there are some issues related to the dating, and there are some issues right now that we can talk about concerning corrections, erasures, and many other things that probably going to sound very weird and strange to the Muslim ear. Dr. J. Yeah, thank you. This is good. We're, we're now, we've always said that uh, this is not our research, and we're very clear that you and I have not done the research. That's correct. Uh, you will be doing research on this area, uh, but what we're doing in our our job is to make sure that this research gets down into the public sphere, it gets down to the laity, uh, gets down to where people can hear it. That's why we're doing these videos. Uh, that's why all of the work that I do is to communicate what the researchers are finding. The researchers dare not do what we're doing because if they were to say and openly and publicly what they have found, they would that would shut down all of their research. They would not be invited back to those countries. Uh, there would be death threats possibly on them. And so that's why we, in some ways, have a unique job, a unique responsibility to get this out to the wider world. Correct. So just to make that caveat so everybody knows, this is not my research, it's not your research. Absolutely. That's and the correct. material we're going to work on now with this episode, if you look at the slide, has been done by Dr. Dan Brubaker. Dr. Dan Brubaker is a scholar who decided to go around and find out looking at the earliest manuscripts to find out if there are any changes, corrections. And to, the, he just to the manuscripts. To the manuscripts, the earliest right. manuscripts. And he came across, uh, he went to the first 10, the 10 earliest manuscripts, and he found seven different kinds of changes that you see up on the screen there. Insertions and erasers, erasers overwritten, overwriting, taping, selective coverings, selective covering overwritten. He wanted to find out maybe, he was thinking maybe 10, even... Uh, even five would do the enough damage. Because what you're saying then, this is no longer eternal. It could not have been sent down by God. God right. did not preserve it. If there was a Muhammad who did write it down, why then was it changed? Even one change would destroy any notion that there was no human intervention. Correct. And that change, that, that idea that has never been changed would be challenged. So he, he was looking for these kind of corrections. Now let's look and see what he did. I introduced this material back in 2014, so it's almost four years old, what I'm gonna to introduce today. Nothing new, but nonetheless, absolutely powerful. He found 390 insertions. Insertions alone. That's right, just insertions. Now you can see there, look at those pictures there, Abdul. Can you see some insertions Absolutely, there? and what we're saying to people here is, please look at the word that was added, and, and it, you don't even need to know Arabic, by the way. It's very obvious, something strange was added that looks different. The thickness is different, the ink is different, the size is different, and... These are later insertions. Here's exactly. an example uh, in, uh, in the top copy manuscript with Surah 66, verse 8. Uh, on the left side, I'll read it, and you can read what the Huff says today. In the left side, the top copy there says, O ye who believe, repent unto you give by it sincerely. Until you give by it sincerely. That's right. Now, that has been changed to... And uh, the word, basically, uh, Allah was added. That's there you it. can see. Can you see the word Allah added uh, right. on the left-hand side? That's you right. can see it's too small, isn't it? That's right. Completely different script. And a different color also. Even All a right. different color. So that's been added. The word Allah, the name of God, has been added to the script. Uh, here is another insertion. Uh, in this case, it's chapter 3, verse 47. Uh, what was added is what he wills. Mayasha. He creates what he wills. And there it is above the, above the, above the word. Can you see That's it above right. the word? We circled it in, in red there. That's right. Another example of insertion. This is in Surah 2, Ayah 137. Bimitli. You can see the bimitli has been kind of squeezed in there between two other letters. Yeah. You can see it doesn't fit. And we circled it in red to show that this is a much later insertion. Uh, here's one from the Bibliothèque Nationale. Uh, it's chapter 23, verse 86. And there you can see the word is above, isn't it? It's right above the line itself. Yeah, the verse used to read, uh, say, who is the God of the heavens and the earth? 
uh, uh, the heavens and a great, uh, basically, a throne. And it was added, who is the God of the seven heavens. So there, Al-Sabah is added, the seventh heaven. And I want to emphasize, Muslims believe there are seven heavens, but we can see here that it was added as a later time. At a later time. Yeah. Now, as we're doing this, can you see what's going on here? They're standardizing the text, aren't they? And also theologically, they're fixing certain issues or maybe developing new theology. So we're watching the development of the Quran in these reference these these examples that we're giving here's another one which uh, chapter 49 verse 50 uh, you can see they believe uh, and also uh, now what, what does it say in the 1924 text the believers so you can see again and by the way what uh, we want you to explain to our audience I know this but what is the 1924 text and what is Hafs in okay. particular? 1924 text is the date that this final canonized text was created in Al-Azhar University in Cairo uh, 1920. So we're talking about 94 years ago. A group of scholars got together and they created a the final text so there would be no discrepancies. That's the text that we use today. And that's this one I have right here. I'm showing it right here. Uh, this one here. That's the Huff's text. That, the Arabic on this side. Now what's fascinating, they said that this came from a rendition of a Kiryat and Ahru, a certain, uh, uh, well, what is Kiryat Ahru? How do we define that? Write it, uh, uh, not what's the word? The there? readings, you mean? Readings, yeah, there or variant text readings, yeah. Variant yeah. readings yes. that were put together by readers and also professors of readers. Narrators of those readers. In the ninth century. That's great. Huffs, and we're going to see this in another episode, Huffs is just one of 31 that we have found today. And here's the thing that we're going to talk about this because Ibn Mujahid is the one who selected those. And just like Uthman took it upon himself to decide something, Ibn Mujahid also took it upon himself to decide readers as well. So these readers have differences, variants. Uh, we've counted up to 59,000, almost 60,000 of these variants. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Hafs is just one of them. And it's attributed to him. The final Quran is attributed to one reader who died in 805. That's right. 805, early 9th century. That's over 1,000 years ago. So Muslims have known about this for 1,000 years. Here's the irony. How do they know it's Huff's? Where is Huff's manuscript? There isn't any <laughs> such thing as Huff's manuscript or original have, Huff's we manuscript. We don't have his manuscript. It's all orally. That's, that's it. right. It's all what we think or is attributed to him. So that's the 1924 Huff's text. Uh, uh, that rendition has only been around since for about 94 years. And here's another thing, Dr. J. Isn't it true that if you go to the introduction for the 1924 Cairo edition, they tell you clearly that they did not rely on any manuscripts. That's right, they did not. It was yeah. only on the Kirat and Ahruf, in this case, choosing one out of 37, really, that we've only found 31 of them. There were probably, we were still looking for about another six That's right. uh, that we have found in, in local stores uh, in around the Middle East. So they do are there. Uh, they're not, it's not that these are being hidden. That's we right. can find them. So now we get uh, 390 erasers. Now take a look at there. Can you see the erasers there? It's very clear. I mean, sometimes it's so clear that there is a gap that is unusual because when you look at the way the uh, the text is written, sometimes they don't have these gaps unless you have removed something. Yeah, so you can see they're intentionally changing the text. Here's some examples. Uh, the top kappa that we've talked about, you can see clearly where the eraser is in Surah 73, Ayah 20. Uh, two-thirds of the night. And we can see that the top copy was also edited later. Why? Because we have red dots, which is diacritical markings that were added at a later time. At a much later time in a different color. Exactly. Here's an example of the Husseini Cairo. That's one in Egypt. And there you can see in chapter 49, verse 6, uh, where you can uh, the word fasaka is used in this manuscript. The word fasiku is used instead in the 1924 house text. So there and you can One see. is a verb. This one is a noun describing somebody, actually, an adjective. And we're assuming that because it's, a, it's an erasure. Here is uh, one from the Petropolis text. Uh, you can see we've circled where the eraser is. And uh, we don't even sure what is it that they've erased there. We'd be, if it's too bad now, we'll never know. That's right. But we That's know right. what the 1924 text says. Uh, here's from seven, chapter 7, verse 158. The Sana'a uh, Musaf. In uh, when you look at that, letters are erased between the words you all and of whom. Uh, we don't know in the modern term what was erased there. We I just can see the pain in your face because well, there's a lot of stuff that is missing, and I agree with you. Well, it, the pain should be in the Muslim's face, not in mine. <laughs> I think this is amazing. This is great what Dan has found because Dr. Brubaker is showing that this idea that this is complete, unchanged, and eternal 
is going right out the window when you look at these examples. Do you care to tell us where he's at in his basically We're going to get research. to that when we finish this. I'm waiting that to the end because I want that to be Wonderful. the bunch. Wonderful. So now we get to St. Peter. This is not one of the six. This is another one in St. Petersburg that he's now just looking at even as we speak. Right. And here you can see the Hijazi manuscript in Sac chapter 26, verse 70. Uh, two words were erased after the word what and before the words do you worship. So I would love to know what is it they've erased there. And by the way, when you say Hijazi, we're talking about some of the earliest manuscripts of the Quran. So this shows that even as early as that time, corrections were taking place. There you go. Uh, here now, then we found, this is fascinating, erasers overwritten, where they've erased it and they wrote over top. It's almost like you use a whiteout and you write over it. 560 examples of this. Not one, not two. You want to go on, don't go all the way up to 560, but you can see we're talking about hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds right. of these erasers. Here you can see an entire sentence that was erased and then re uh, written over top. I would love to know what they erased. Here you can see example of the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris. Uh, there you can uh, erases in chapter 11, verse 111 and 112. You can see some erasers there. Another example here is in the Petropolitanus again. Here, there you can see quite clearly where the eraser is. And what's interesting that you notice there about the letter they replaced it with? There is the, the letter da, and it's stretched out, as you can see, to cover the whole gap that was erased. Because yeah. normally you're not going to write it this way. No. So that's an elongated stretching. Exactly. There's a name for that. Uh, meshk. Meshk. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. there's an example of meshk that you have right yeah. there in Surah 3, Ayah 171. Here's another example, St. Petersburg manuscript that's up in Russia on, uh, and I think this is 7 verse 189, and then you get another example here of another, and this is overwriting. They didn't even bother to erase, they just wrote over top. So you can see both the lower text and the upper text, what they erased. This is a lot, a lot easier. And what I like about some of them are written in a different color, like red, you can see. Even yes. red, yeah. They're not even trying to. So it's obvious that the earliest compilers of the Quran were not at all interested in hiding this. What I want to emphasize, and I said that before, uh, brother, is that it seems to me that the early Muslims were really not looking at this as a fixed text. They had no problem writing with a different color. They had no problem making editions. They were probably, yes, modifying, editing, doing things, but it's not as rigid as we hear today. To them, it didn't appear to be that way. Yeah, and they didn't have any problem because they didn't think it was a difficulty. That's right. They didn't. I don't even think they made the claims that they're making today. I wouldn't be very interested to know whether or not they would say that this is eternal, whether or not they would say that it was complete and unchanged. I would love, well, we already know it's already changed. So mm -hmm. these claims, these four claims are modern Muslims who have to That's say correct. that because the Quran has no other authority. Or um, let me put it but even more strenuous. Muslims have no other authority than the Quran. And how That's are you correct. going to make the Quran eternal? How are you going to make it so it's the greatest of all revelation? It has to be eternal above criticism. That's Here's correct. an example of the Topkapa, uh, volume of uh, chapter 70, verse 32, an overriding with not even erasing it. They're not even bothering erasing They just wrote over top of it. Another example in the Sana'a manuscript, chapter 3, verse 104. Now we get to the selective coverings. Now these are, I find, the most fascinating. These are coverings over words and sometimes entire phrases to hide the text. Correct. You can see where, they're, where it's censoring it. This is Like the word censorship. Kalala, for instance, in one of those. We're gonna see some covered. examples. Here is covering of the Hul Husseini text that's in Cairo, chapter two, verse 187. Covers something between the words, so eat and until. Whereas today, today the Quran reads, eat and drink until the white thread of dawn appear. I'd love to know what they're covered. Wouldn't it be able to great to just pick it up and look and see underneath? That's right. That's Maybe right. someday we could do that. Here's an example again with Hosea uh, chapter 2, verse 191 to 193. And those of you who want to see this in more depth, you can go back, look at the slides, shut and yes, yeah. pause them and just look and see how these Absolutely. change the text. They're going to be available for them. Take a look at this one here. How many different coverings do you see on just one page? A lot. I see one, two, Starting three, from every four, line, every line. Five, has... six, almost seven different coverings. It almost makes it almost uh, absolutely haphazard to read it That's when cool. you have that many coverings. Then we get to selected coverings overwritten. So here they have covered it, and then they've written over something over top. 210 that, I, that uh, Dan uh, gave me back in 2014. And other things that he came up with were these, these tapings. These are tapings. Now look at the one on the left-hand side. He saw the taping at the top, thinking that, that must maybe it's there to uh, something had been damaged. But when he looked on the backside, there's no damage whatsoever. 
So it's obviously that they were not trying to repair anything. They were covering up words, complete words. And what's more, when you look at all the words around it, it fits the standardized text today. Correct. If you look at the one in the middle and the one on the right-hand side, you can see quite a few coverings there. In the one in the middle, I see at least four coverings. The one on the right-hand side, I see one, two, three, four, five, maybe six different coverings on just that one page. That's correct. So, 2,200 corrections in total. Wait, you said Dan was looking for five, maybe ten. I know, and this is in 2014. Guess what they have, what they're up to today? Over 4,000, double that number. Double even this number. That's when we just phoned him up just a little while ago. Now they're up over 4,000 corrections that they have. We're, I mean, we're going to be going for years looking at all these corrections. It's going to take an awful long time to unpack them, to look at them, to try to see how they change the text, how they change the meaning. This idea that this is a perfect Quran that's never been changed, what are you going to do? That they all, and here's what's really fascinating. When he looked at them, he noticed that these corrections do not just happen at one period. They continue up through the 8th century, up through the 9th century. And... and you know, we can even keep on going, you know, after that, who knows, in the 10th and 11th and the 12th century, what would you find? There you go. This, there's an awful lot of research yet to be done. That's right. So that he said these are intentional changes. In every case, these are human hands doing the changes. And that in every case, they were standardizing the text, bring it down to one standard. Now, tell me if that's not human intervention. Absolutely. And once again, like I said, it seems to me that the early Muslims did not view the text with the same rigidity that we see today. Okay. Well, my conclusion already, you can see where I'm going to go with this. We've now looked at the two different compilations. We've now looked, uh, when, we, when we've, uh, we've looked at the six earliest manuscripts, and now we have just gone through the, co the corrections. 2,200 corrections that we looked at by in 2014, up to over 4,000 corrections. Insertions, deletions, coverings, tapings, uh, without even erasers, writing over top, and also coverings written over top. Tapings as well. To me, Al-Fadi, what does it say? Well, I'll tell you what it says to me. It says that this is not from God, this is not from Muhammad. These continue, these corrections, and from what Dan has found, continue in these manuscripts up until the 9th century. So when was the Quran finally written down? When was it written down? Obviously, uh, more research uh, is being done and more research has been done, and we will continue to collect data to try to come up with a date. But it seems to me, based on what you're saying, it's at least 200 years so far okay. that we're talking about. Uh, before we do that, I want to go and look at one manuscript in particular. We're going to do that in the next episode, and that is a Sana. We're going to look at this palimpsest that you mentioned earlier. And... Give us a teaser so that the people know why they need to watch the next This one. is probably the most problematic of the manuscripts because it has found it has two different layers. Uh, this is the one that's covered in 1975, and now the ink is starting to bleed through. But more than that, when they put it under ultraviolet light, they can separate it, and they're looking at these two different layers, and they're finding that they do not match. Ooh, two, two, two. Wow. And wait till we find for you till you find out what we do know about these two. Ladies and layers. gentlemen, you heard uh, you heard the man uh, talking about the Sana manuscript, and this is why we want you to join us again next uh, episode to basically uh, hear and see the evidence that will be presented to you. But really, here is my appeal to you as my Muslim friends who are watching. Does this sound to you as a book revealed from heaven that is perfect, that is preserved, that is complete? I challenge you to think about that. Lord bless you. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron on patreon.com forward slash Sierra International.